Duan. Duan Ru Wan is a rich man in Daming County. He is in his 40s and has no son. His wife, Leon, was very jealous. Duan Ru Wan wanted to buy a concubine but did not dare, so he had an affair with a slave. When the Leon family found out, they beat the slave and sold her to a family named Luan in Hejian County. Later, Duan Ru Wan gradually aged, and his nephews came to borrow money and things every day. If they didn't agree with a word, they would all look ugly and speak in an angry tone. Duan Ru Wan felt that he could not allow them to be greedy, so he wanted to adopt a nephew as his son, but the other nephews blocked it. No matter how fierce Leon was, she was helpless at this time and said angrily, the old man is only over 60 years old. How come he can't have a son? He even bought to concubines and allowed her husband to do whatever he wanted without asking a question. More than a year later, both concubines became pregnant and the whole family was overjoyed. Leon's heart felt relieved and her waist became stiffer. When her nephews came to borrow things by force, they refused angrily. Not long after, one concubine gave birth to a daughter. The other concubine gave birth to a son. She died shortly after giving birth. And the couple was disappointed. More than a year later, Duan Ru Wan suffered a stroke and became ill. The nephews became even more unrestrained and just took the cattle, horses and property from their own homes. Leon cried and scolded them, but they retorted with sarcasm. Leon had no choice but to cry all day long. Duan Ru Wan's illness became more severe after all this, and he died soon after. Before the funeral, the nephews were discussing in front of the coffin how to divide Duan Ru Wan's family property. Leon was extremely sad, but couldn't stop it. I just want to leave a fertile farm to support the young and old. When the nephews refused, Leon scolded angrily, You don't leave an inch of land for me. Are you going to let my whole family starve to death? She cried angrily and beat her chest. Suddenly, a guest came to pay his respects. He walked straight to the mourning soul and cried his heart out. After crying, he knelt down at the place of mourning. Everyone was surprised and asked who it was. The visitor said, The deceased is my father. Everyone was shocked. The guest calmly told the whole story. It turned out that the slave that Leon sold to the Luan family gave birth to a son five or six months later and named him Huai. The Luan family treated Luan Huai like other sons and raised him as a scholar. At the age of 18, he was admitted as a scholar. Later, Luan died and his sons separated, but Luan Huai was not included. Luan Huai asked his mother and found out that he was a descendant of the Duan family, so he said, since the Luan family has two surnames, and each has its own ancestral temple. Why bother fighting for someone else's hundred acres of land here? Then he rode there, in the Duan family, Duan Ru Wan is already dead. What the visitor said was well-founded and conclusive. Leon was angry, but when he heard about it, he was overjoyed. He came out and said loudly, I have a son now. The cattle, Horses and property that you each took by force must be returned to me properly. Otherwise, we will file a lawsuit. Nephews. They looked at each other with pale faces and ran away one by one with excuses. Luan Huai changed his name to Duan Huai and brought his family members over to mourn his father. Duane's nephews and nephews felt very aggrieved by Duan Huai's rival and conspired to drive him away. When Duan Huai found out, he said angrily, the Luan family doesn't recognize my surname as Luan, and the Duan family doesn't recognize my surname as Duan. Where can I go? He angrily wanted to complain to the government. Relatives and neighbors helped them solve the problem, and the nephews of the Duan family gave up the idea. But Leon refused to give up because he didn't want the cattle, horses and other items back. Duan Wai advised her to forget it, but Leon refused to listen, and said, it was not because of a few cows and horses that I couldn't get out of my heart. Your father was so angry with them that I swallowed my anger because I didn't have a son. Now that I have a son, what else am I afraid of? You don't know what happened in the past, so I can go to court with them myself. Duan Wai tried to dissuade him again and again, but Leon refused to listen. He wrote a complaint and went straight to the county government to complain. The county magistrate rested Duane's nephews and tried the case. When Leon made her statement in the lobby, she was confident, sad and eloquent. 
the county magistrate was moved and beat the Dwin family's nephew severely, recovered their property and returned it to Leon. After Leon returned home, he called his nephews who had not participated in the division of his family property and gave them all the recovered property. When Mr. Leon was over 70 years old and was about to die, he called his daughter and grandson-in-law to him and said, Remember, if you don't have children by the age of 30, you have to pawn your family property and marry your husband a concubine. It's hard to live without a son. It feels so good. Mao, the wife of Zhang Jia from Jinan, was barren but very jealous. Her sister-in-law repeatedly urged her to take a concubine for her husband. But Mao refused to listen and said, I would rather die than let that little vixen with his eyes and eyebrows irritate people in front of me. When she was about to be 40, Mao began to I often worried about having no heirs. And I thought about raising a son from my stepbrother's family. My brother and sister-in-law both agreed, but they deliberately delayed it. Every time the child came to his uncle's house, Zhang Jia and his wife would give him delicious food and then ask, would you like to come to our house? The child said yes, after the elder brother learned about it. He secretly told his son, if she asks you again, just say no. If she asks you why, just say, when you die, you don't have to worry about your family's land not belonging to me. One day, Zhang Jia went to a distant place to do business, and the child came again. Mao asked him again, and the child learned what his father taught him. Mao was furious and said, are you planning to calculate my family's property every day while my family is still alive? I made the wrong decision. He kicked the child out and immediately called a matchmaker to buy a concubine for her husband. There happened to be a slave seller, but the price was so high that Mao couldn't even spend all his money, so he couldn't buy it. Zhang Jia's brother was afraid that Mao would regret it if he delayed it, so he called the matchmaker and gave her the money, pretending that she had borrowed it and then lent it to Mao to help her complete this good thing. Mo was overjoyed and bought the slave back home. When Zhang Jia came back, Mao told his brother what the children had said. Zhang Jia was furious and cut off all contact with his brother. More than a year later, my concubine gave birth to a son, and Zhang Jia and his wife liked him very much. Mao said, the matchmaker didn't know who she borrowed the money from, and she didn't ask for it for more than a year. This kindness cannot be forgotten. Now that she has a son, she should repay his mother's worth. Zhang Jia took the money and went to visit the matchmaker. The matchmaker smiled and said, You should thank your brother. I am so poor. How dare I borrow money? Then she told the story of buying the concubine in detail. Zhang Jia woke up and was very moved. When he came home and told Mr. Mao, the couple burst into tears of gratitude, prepared a banquet and invited his brother and sister-in-law to come home. They knelt down to greet him, took out the money and returned it to his brother. The brother did not want it and left happily. Later, Zhang Jia gave birth to three sons in succession. All right, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.